Hey, on this edition of the Off the Bench podcast, we are with my fellow North Carolina native, Anthony Gill. We've got a lot of stories to tell you. I want to start with the most interesting one that I just heard, AG. You were in Turkey playing, and for one month, what was your uh, meal of choice? Uh, I wouldn't call it a meal. It was, (laughs) but it was, uh... okay, so let's just walk you through it. First year overseas, I always hear horror stories about going overseas, so I was just nervous to eat anything. So I went to a grocery store the first day I was there, and I saw a box of Snickers, like a big box, like that you would see at Sam's Club or something. So I was like, I was talking to my wife, I was like, babe, I'm grabbing it. I was like, the whole thing. So I grabbed the whole thing of Snickers, took it home, ate it for a month. That's it. That was it. But again, I mean, that year I was rookie of the year, so it paid off somehow. You know, maybe I'll go back to that diet. And I, I have to ask, though, this is just as serious as a follow-up you could ask about something like that. Did you notice anything? Like, that's a lot of sugar, right? Yeah. yeah. But did it change, like, your... I wasn't angry. That's their slogan, right? I wasn't angry. You weren't, you wasn't angry. Yeah. And it actually led to being Rookie of the Year. Right. That's amazing. This is not a Snickers endorsement at all. It, not, not at all. Not. Uh, <laughs> how, how much more comfortable are you kind of now in this building after last season and just kind of just reintegrating yourself with this group? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really comfortable. I, I love these guys, like I always say. And um, for me to be able to have a job where I get to come in and, and be around great people every single day, it's, it's a blessing, you know. And uh, most people don't get to enjoy their jobs, and, and, I, and I do. I truly enjoy mine, um, you know, from the top to bottom, from management to ownership, all the way down to, to me, the, the last guy on the roster. You know, I enjoy every single person. You know, I enjoy the ball, the ball guys that we have, you know, team attendance. I enjoy everyone. I, I, I love being here. I saw a pretty cool thing that you did in the offseason where you recognize people, staff workers at the arena. Mm. I mean, that's just a way, I guess, of giving back. But, I mean, that, that really, like, speaks to your character. Where does Anthony Gill's character come from? Like, who's responsible for you kind of being who you are today? Uh, I would first, first say my faith. You know, I'm, I'm a big guy who, who believes that God has put me in a position to love everybody that I can. Um, but then also, second, my parents. Um, they, my dad was hard on me to, you know, treat everyone with respect. And my mom showed me the love. and how to love everyone and I just try to put that same love and respect towards everybody that I meet now. Um, you know, and a lot of times we can get caught up in what we have going on in our own lives all the time. Um, for me, I just try to slow down and I'm like, okay, what could, you know, Chris have going on today that I can possibly show him a little bit of love to get him over that hump that he needs to get over to, for him to be able to enjoy the rest of his day. So for me, it's just my mom, my dad, and my faith. I literally had a conversation with some students last night and I was thinking about you at the time because you do this on a regular basis. This Mm -hmm. interaction, this thing of people kind of connecting and sharing stories and still matters in 2022. Wouldn't you agree? Like I I was talking about how like we're just so consumed by a phone and kind of just looking at it and just being a part of our day that if you take more time, and this is not like an infomercial on life, folks, it's just something that I've just noticed that if you just take some time and just talk to somebody, yeah. how much more do you get fulfillment out of that kind of engagement? Yeah, I'm, for me personally, I get a lot of fulfillment about it. Any, 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 much more than I can get from a phone or going out and scoring however many points or winning X amount of games, for me, it's the interactions every day to day to day. Um, I want to make sure that the next person is okay you know and that then in turn gives me fulfillment you know if i have a real conversation with someone learning from that person really getting to know them interacting with them on a level that is not surface level you know hey what's up how you doing today like and you know a lot of people ask that question and they don't really care about the answer they just keep it moving but for me i I truly care and i want to know you know how you're doing what's going on in your life how can we do life together you know that's that's the biggest thing and because a lot of times in life you can go through, everybody go through life and you can feel like you're alone. You know, I never want the, anybody that I ever interact with to feel like they're alone, so. Yeah. Tell me who is, uh, this is an international team. All I do is look at the roster and see where everyone comes from. I was literally laughing uh, this morning. You had Kyle Kuzma, 
Will Barton, and Denny Avia all shooting corner threes. And you just think about where all these guys are from. Mm -hmm. And the one thing that kind of brings them together is this basketball, right? Right. Who's the most intriguing person on the team when you look at them and you're very curious about who they are as a person? Um, the most intriguing person on the team, I would have to say, for me, would have to be Rui. Um, uh, I think I said this before, a black man growing up in, in Japan uh, at 6'8", 250 pounds, it's not normal. Um, so just kind of seeing his life and seeing, you know, like what he had to go through as a person and, you know, the interactions that he had growing up as a kid and just trying to understand him a little bit better is, is you know, because a lot of times Rui can kind of put on this mask of, you know, I'm, I'm the black samurai, I'm, I'm, you know, tough guy, everything like that. So breaking down the walls and really getting to know Rui would probably be the coolest. What's the one thing that you've learned about him? Maybe it was on our trip to Japan. Was there something about him culturally that you took away from the conversations with him? Uh, first off, Japan was amazing. Like that, that trip altogether was eye-opening for me. You know, I, I never, I always wanted to go to Japan, but I never knew what to expect. And like it blew any expectations that I could ever imagine for myself um, going there. But just to go back to your original question, for Rui, to see him in his own environment was, uh, was amazing. To watch him interact with the fans, to watch him interact with you know, a little kid that comes up to him and, you know, and talks to him in Japanese, that was the coolest thing for me. Because you know, here in America, you know, a little kid comes up to Rui, you know, Rui he does you know, the normal like, Americanized version of everything. But to watch him actually interact with people and to see him you know, interact with his culture and to see you know, he took us out to a restaurant and you know there was some food on the plate that I've never seen before and I'm highly allergic to a lot of different things. If I say allergic, if I say I'm allergic to something that means I just don't like it. But, <laughs> <That's cold. laughs> but so I was highly allergic to a lot of stuff on this plate but to just you know hear him tell us all about this and like what it meant to the culture and everything like that that was probably the coolest thing to see you know Rui coming out of his shell and for us to really get to see the culture with Rui, so that was cool. Because you have this ability to kind of connect with the entire group, mm. is there somebody in the locker room, and I'm gonna put them on blast, is there someone in the locker room where you look at them and it's like, I'm gonna make this my, my, my goal to connect with this person? Um, you know this is gonna sound like a funny question, or funny answer, I would say myself. A lot of times I'm very trying to, you know, absorb with everybody around me, you know, and then there's not one person I can just pick out and say like, I want to break, you know, down his walls and understand him um, as a person. But for me, it's kind of like, I want to make sure that I am breaking down the walls that I have internally on myself with the interactions that I have with these guys. That way I can truly understand and we can really grow as people together. So the interactions that we have, like this talk, me and you right now, instead of me just trying to, you know, get through this interview, like, okay, let's really try to get to the root of something. Let's really, you know, I may say something that sparks something in you, you may say something that sparks something in me, and I think about it later. Um, so just that kind of that stuff is really what I try to go for every day is how can I break down my own wall so that I can be as real as possible with every single body, every single person around me. That way we can all get something out of it. Tell me about AG, the husband and father of three. Hmm. Five, three, and one. God bless you. Yeah. How are you doing it? How are you managing all of that? Um, first off, shout out to my beautiful wife, Jenna. She's the real superhero. Um, she's home with them majority of the day, and I could not do that, you know, because those kids, I love them so much, but, you know, they can argue over, you know, who's the tallest. <laughs> and it's clear as day. It goes just like the cell phone signal, you know, it goes just like that. But they're going to argue about it. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's so much fun, you know, having kids and having a family is, for me, so rewarding. Um, to watch my daughter, my two sons grow up from, you know, infants to where they are now, um, with still so much potential to grow, it's, it's just amazing. To watch my wife grow as a person every single day, um, and to be able to go through life with her every single day, like, those are the most important things in life, you know, like I said before, not coming out here and scoring however many points or, you know, winning however many games. The most important thing is when I get back home to my wife and kids and I see the looks on their face when their dad walks through the door and, you know, as tired, as tired as I am, I need to get on that floor and start rolling around with them. I need to 
Dad, let's go play basketball outside after I've just been playing basketball for five hours. Okay, let's go. Like, let's go. You know, that, that's for me, that's fatherhood and husbandhood is, is amazing for me. How do you, because I'm still trying to figure this out, how do you balance your career with the most important job, which is being a husband and father? Have you found work-life balance yet? Um, it's a constant struggle every single day. For me, um, you know, but I always remember what's most important. Like you just said, my family is most important. You know, if, if there is ever a time where I feel like, oh man, I'm getting a little bit too much time to the game, you know, I need to take a step back and reevaluate. Um, but I do love this game so much, so it's 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 a, it's a struggle every single day. Uh, but I love my family so much more, so it's not that big of a struggle. <laughs> uh, we recently just came off a trip to Memphis and Charlotte, where there was a revelation and the Revelation's name is Jordan Goodwin. Mm. And I'm sure you can appreciate his, his journey yeah. of just grit and grind and having like success. What did it mean to you to watch JG perform like that? Um, I was so happy for him. You know, I, I don't think he knows how happy for him that I am, you know, because to watch him every single day, you know, work so hard, you know, for a goal that doesn't seem like it's gonna be obtained or you don't know when it's gonna happen. So watching him work that hard every single day and, and that Memphis game, he got in the game. And if you guys remember, you know, even further back at the beginning of the season against Boston, he got in the game, he changed the game there too. Um, to watch those moments and to see, you know, I was talking to in the locker room about it, I was like, how did it feel out there? Just knowing like as a kid, you grew up and you thought about like catching fire in a game in the NBA game and you did that. And you know, he just, he smiled and you know, he said, it, I can't even put it into words, you know? And for me, that's so rewarding to see guys accomplish a goal and accomplish a, a dream, not only to be in the NBA, but to be successful in a, in a game in the NBA. People don't understand how hard it is to score one point in a game, let alone however many he just scored in that game. So I'm really happy for him. I'm a sucker for a good story, and it was a great story. Yeah. And it got even better after what he did at Memphis to follow that up with what he did in Charlotte. Speaking of Charlotte, we were in your hometown, my home state. Shout out to Crest Stations, who provided <laughs> the post-game meal, by the way. Five star. Um, thank you for the family. So family restaurant, family business. Talk to me about that. Uh, yeah, so my... My sister and her husband started this restaurant four years ago, um, and it's doing really well. Crustaceans is a, a seafood restaurant in Charlotte. Um, the catfish, the fried catfish is amazing. The lobster tail and red velvet waffle is a combination that you can't get anywhere else. So um, this is a free plug, by this the way. Is, this is, <laughs> is definitely <laughs> a plug. <laughs> no, but it's a great, it's great. And I'm, I'm just so happy that the Wizards allows me to you know, bring a part of my family to the post-game meal. You know, like, hey guys, there's a, there's a great restaurant here in town. Let me provide it for you. You so. and I both talk about just how special it is for us to come back home and uh, you do your thing on the court and for me to broadcast a game with like my parents in the stands and family. It's just, uh, it's just special, yeah. right? Like we, when we landed, I don't know if, the, if, it, if, if it's still like this for you, but you, you land there and you're like, I'm home, right? Right? D does it feel like that to you? Or is it just kind of like another game? No, no, for sure it's different. You know, I'm the type of person that I hate anything to be about me. Um, but that Charlotte game, you know, I, I can feel it. It's something that comes over me. I'm like, okay, like now I'm gonna step on the court and my family's gonna be in the in the crowd. And like, and I and I just love that feeling. Uh, it's definitely different. This past game, you know, I stepped off uh, the plane. And I just I took a deep breath. And I was like, this is definitely a great place because you can smell it. <laughs> yeah, that you can. And I know you weren't feeling well before that in Memphis, and I remember just seeing you in the elevator, and I was like, how are you doing? You're like, much better today. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Was yeah. that like a byproduct of just really feeling better or just the environment in which you were in? I think it all plays into it, you know, just being able to go home, knowing that you're going to be able to see family in a time where, you know, I was not feeling well at all, uh, knowing that I was going to be able to see my family kind of perk my spirits up a little bit. Tell me about this year's team, the identity. I know it's still early in the year. We all try to wait 20 games before kind of forecasting what it looks like. Mm -hmm. But what does it look like to you early on? Yeah, we're a team that's learning every single day. Um, I think that we are going to be the only people that can stop us. 
you know, if that makes sense. Not in the sense of talent wise, you know, there's a lot of talented teams out there, but we have a lot of talent as well. Um, you know, we have guys who can score, a lot of guys who can score 20 points a night. You know, we have Rui, we have Denny, we have KP, Brad, uh, Kuz, um, Will, Monte, all these great scorers who can, you know, get buckets. You know, it's going to come down to who's going to sacrifice um, and sacrifice for each other. And that's, that's really what it's going to come down to. So, what, especially when I get on the court, I'm like, okay, I don't need to shoot the ball. My goal is to get everybody moving. Um, and we need more guys like that every single time that, you know, we step onto the floor. Um, because we need to understand, like, our success is based off of the individual sacrifices that we're going to make this year. So I think we have a lot of potential to grow. Um, we're learning every single game, as you can tell. You know, there's games where we get blown out. There's games where we're fighting. Um, there's games where we'll win. Um, so if we can get that down and understand and sacrifice for each other, I think we'll be okay. I think after that Brooklyn game, I, I heard through the, through the campfire, if you will, that you know guys were not happy yeah. know, speaking up. But, uh, when games like that happen, because there's 82 of them, mm -hmm. like how do you compartmentalize like a blowout? Like yeah. it's like it's one game, but yes, there's a lot of things to correct. Yeah, it's easy to panic in situations like that. You know, we got blown out, like clear as day. So, you know, we can either go two ways. We can we can just shut down, and you know, we could say, you know, wow, we're just not going to be as good, or or we can go the way we don't. We we could say, we're going to blow up on everybody, and say it's your fault, it's your fault, or or actually, there's three ways where we can we can try to fix it. You know, I, I always pride myself on being as neutral as possible, not being too high, not being too low. Um, and losses like that, we got to stay neutral, you know, because, you know, the next game we could win and everybody could be right there, you know, back on top of us again. And, and we could be riding this high wave um, of, you know, excitement and, you know, joy ready to go. Uh, but we got to remember, like, two games ago, we were just down here. Right. So the goal is to stay as neutral as possible learn from the highs and learn from the lows, but stay right here. When you were a kid watching the NBA and now being in the NBA, is it everything that you thought it would be or is it, is, is it different than what you thought it would be when you were a kid watching? Um, every single day I'm shocked at the things that go on, um, but shocked in a good way. You know, this is a great job. We, we do have a lot of pressure, um, but I mean, come on, we're getting paid a lot of money to play basketball. The game that I would go to the YMCA right now and go play for free. The game that you play, you shoot hoops, you know, for free. We, but we get paid for it. So, you know, I'm, I'm surprised every single day of the things that go on, but it's, it's a good surprise. I love this game and growing up, you just think, you know, the NBA is going to be amazing, you know, and I wake up every morning and I get to go to the NBA arena and it is. It is very amazing, and I don't take that for granted at all. I know with all the great things that come with it comes great responsibility. So with all the amazement, I know that, all right, now it's time to perform. Now it's time to get out here, and we have to you know, do our jobs now. I want to ask you about Wes Unsell, Jr. Just from a player's perspective, what do you think is the hardest thing he has to deal with on a daily basis? Is it managing egos, X's and O's? just trying to figure out the room every day? Like, like from a player's perspective, what's the hardest thing he has to deal with? Um, the hardest thing I think he has to deal with is probably managing us in the locker room. And then once he leaves that locker room, he has to manage everybody else that comes with him. Like, why did you guys lose? Or why did you win? Why did you make this decision? So. In the locker room, the guys are asking them the same questions that the guys outside the locker room are asking them. So he, again, to that neutral that I was talking about, he has to stay neutral, you know, at, at every every point in time. And that's the one thing I respect about him the most. You know, there's never a time where I can I can see him like visibly, you know, rattled, you know, or like oh he's he's about to lose it. You know, he's not under control right now. Whenever we we lost that Brooklyn game, he said what he had to say. And we kept it moving, we learned from it, and we moved on to the next game. We won this game against Charlotte. He said we had to say, we learned from it, we keep it moving. And that's the thing that I respect about him the most. So he has a hard job, you know, and I, 
I never want that job. You know, Everybody's but, an NBA coach. Just ask him. Oh right? man. Right, everybody. Oh man. You go on Twitter and everybody, <laughs> everybody will tell you how to win. Um, but he's the one actually in the seat. Uh, he has to do it every single day. And he, I, me personally, I think he's doing a great job. Um, of course, there's a lot of room to grow, and I think we're all growing and all learning right now. But in the time being, I think he's doing a great job. You mentioned social media. I just want to end with this because I just think it's such a, a thing now as athletes try to navigate a season. You have to hear all this noise. How do you manage social media? Are you, are you even are you um, on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all these platforms? You know, it's funny. I'm on Instagram, not on Twitter, not on any other social media platform, but I hear it all. You know, I, I know, you know, why, why is Anthony Gill in the game? You know, why is, why is, why is West putting such and such in the game at this time? Why, why is this person finishing the game opposing to this person? You know, and it's all just noise for me. You know, I, I always focus on what is true, what is real. I know that when I get in the game, I keep the game consistent. You know, I know that I'm not going to go out there and score 20 points. It's never going to, never going to be my role. I'm okay with that. Um, but I, I just focus on what is real and what is true. I know that the coaches trust me to do my job, so I go out here every single day I do my job. I ignore all the other head coaches that are on Twitter. <laughs> um, so not saying that you know, they don't have knowledge of the game, not at all, but I just know what's true, and what's true is we have a group of guys that we're focused on a goal every single day, and if I let the, outside, the outsiders kind of dictate how I was feeling, then you know the people on the inside would be impacted every single day. So I really have to just stay locked in and stay focused on you know what we have going on here and everything else doesn't matter. Words live by. Ag, thanks so much for your time, man. Thank you. I will never try the Snickers for a month diet, and I don't recommend you trying it at home. But it worked for this guy because now he's try major crustaceans. For the Washington Wizards. Try crusta crustaceans. I do not condone the Snickers diet, but I appreciate you guys so much for having me on the show, man. It's <laughs> It's a blessing. Thank you. You're from Mecklenburg County, made it, Mama. <laughs> Thanks, Thank brother. you, sir.